Greetings, everybody. It's November the 14th, 48 days left in the year. This is your daily devotional, The Thought for the Day. 10 minutes of scriptures, fun facts. And as we always say, the most important thing is the Word of God. So if you're new to the channel, remember to click a like, subscribe, hit that notification button so that you know when we put these videos and other videos up. All right, let's start off with the scripture of the day from Psalm 5, verse 12. For thou, O Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him with a shield. Reading the Bible in a year, those of you that are doing it, you're all the way up to Lamentations 3 to 5 and Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 39. Here's your thoughts for the day. The opposite of a correct statement is a false statement, but the opposite of a profound truth may well be another profound truth. Often our distrust contributes to the deceit of others. And there are some remedies worse than the disease. Motivation for the day. To avoid criticism, do nothing. Say nothing, be nothing. Sounds like that old Hogan hero, Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. Anyway, on this day in history, probably some of you are too young to even know that reference. But anyway, back to the daily history. 1896 in Britain, the speed limit for horseless carriages is raised from 4 miles an hour to 14 miles an hour. In 1911, George V, King, and Queen Mary land at Gibraltar, the first time a reigning British monarch had visited a British Commonwealth country. In 1940, World War II, German bombers launch a major night raid on Coventry in the Midlands. More than a thousand people are killed and Coventry Cathedral is destroyed. 1971 was the first spacecraft to orbit a planet. NASA's Mariner 9 entered Mars's orbit after 167 days in space. 1977 was the first national fireman strike in Britain. 10,000 troops are called to cover the emergencies. In 1985, remember that volcano in Nevada del Ruz? It uh, continues to erupt and thousands more are killed. In 2018, a large impact crater 31 kilometers wide from an iron meteorite is identified under Hiawatha Glacier in Greenland. Here's your personal story for today. Removing the barriers. Often people are divided at sporting events, fans supporting opposite teams. <laughs> you know, for those in Australia, you've probably heard of the state of origin. You know, and when there's an election, voters are going to choose candidates from opposing political parties. You know, it's hard to get along. Your neighbor vote for that and this person vote for that. And people don't even speak for each other. Even at the airport, travelers approaching the ticket counter find a line for first class passengers and a much longer line for everyone else. Now, these divisions are acceptable in their own way, but other divisions are not. People are divided by prejudice that may be racial, as we have discussed, uh, sexual, cultural, uh, even geographical. One of the most noted of those in the biblical times was the division between Jews and Gentiles. Now, God addressed this division very directly in a vision for Peter. When Peter was asked to go to the home of Cornelius, a Gentile, as we said yesterday, it wasn't for Jews to be hanging out with non-Jews at the time. God knew that Peter was not going to go because of his upbringing and cultural tendencies. So God had to break down Peter's prejudice based on his past learning. And, and thankfully, he got the message. God has shown me and others around the world that I should not call any man unclean or impure. That's the words of Peter in verse 28 uh, of Acts chapter 10. Now, later Paul would write that Jesus hath broken down the middle wall of the partition between us, Ephesians 2.14, and there's neither Jew nor Greek, servant or free, women or man no more. You are all one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.28. Now think about the time of the Samaritan woman when Jesus spoke to her in John chapter 4. When Jesus spoke to her, he ignored religious, racial, and sexual prejudice, along with the disdain others had shown her because of her immorality. Remember, she uh, slept around a little bit. He ignored these to give her the message of salvation, 
We too must remove the barriers that keep us from reaching others and fellowshipping with those who are part of our church. Devotion thoughts for the day, Psalm 38, verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. References today are from Psalm 38. Confessing our sins and our sinful nature before God is another type of prayer we should practice often. Psalm 38 is traditionally considered one of the seven pentatential psalms, uh, you know, with the others being Psalm 6, 32, 51, well known, uh, 102, 130, and 143, if you're, you know, pause and repeat those if you like. So the main point is found in, in verses 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Thus, when the psalmist asked the Lord to help him, we understand that he was talking primarily about forgiveness. David's soul was sick, and he described these feelings in intense bodily terms. He had no health. His bones were unsound. His back ached. His wounds festered. He was mute and deaf. He felt crushed and helpless. Maybe some of you have felt that as you get a little older or uh, going through that. But, you know, this is some dramatic stuff that David's going through. All these symptoms afflicted him because he knew, well, he had offended God. God was disciplining his child, exercising holy discipline to bring him to the painful point of repentance. The physical imagery is so vivid here that David understood the full consequence of sin as opposed to a single you know, error that occurred through most of our lives. Have you ever confessed your sins with this kind of spiritual intensity? Paul certainly had a moment like this. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans 7, 24. In addition, because David was Israel's king and sometimes, you know, hidden his sin, uh, God had made his sin and its consequences public. As a result, his friends had dropped away and his enemies, they were waiting to pounce. Final thought for the day is down in the valley. Exodus 15, 21 to 22. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Though horse and rider, he hath thee thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. You now, mountaintops are great places. Have you ever been on them? They don't have any mountains in Australia, sorry. But here in Canada, we've got some pretty big mountains. And you stand on some lofty peak, it seems as if you can see forever. You know, but most people don't live on mountains. You know, the demands uh, of the reality that, you know, life is generally lived down in the valley, a little fertile, a lot more access to water, right? Well, the Israelites had just come through one of the high mm -hmm. points in the nation's history, a mountaintop experience. Chased by Pharaoh's army, they crossed the divided Red Sea with dry sandals. You know, and they saw the waters rush in and crush the enemies. It's their proverbial baptism. You know, what a tremendous joy. And guess what? They sang to God. And then they hit the valley and, you know, get a little hungry, you know, a little complaining. When are we going to get there? You ever been on a road trip with kids in the car? Are we there yet? You know, so there they are in the fresh top of the uh, of the mountaintop, nice fresh air, you know, and the, the dry, oppressive air of the wilderness, and you're wandering around for three days, and they, they didn't find any water. Well, compared to the mountaintops, the valleys are real spiritual challenges, but that's the way real life is. Spiritual mountaintops are wonderful. You feel close to God, during your devotional time, you return from a weekend camp knowing the living Lord has met you in a special way. You come home from church after a talk and it's met a deeply spiritual need in your life. You revel in the warmth of the marvelous mountaintop experience. But that's not where you or I live. You live in the valley where, guess what? You know, there might be some dirty dishes. The lawn needs mowing, children to raise, uh, you know, the laundry isn't getting done anytime soon. And often real life, you know, isn't much fun. Now, it can be. You just have to sort of work your way through it. 
Now, fortunately, Israel discovered, as will you, that God is with you both on the mountain and in the valley. He never leaves you, never allows you out of his loving care. Now, we appreciate those times when we encounter God in a special way. But we know that God is also with us when we sink to spiritual lows and feel a little dry. The God you meet in the good times is the same God who meets you in the hard times. That brings us to a conclusion. Here's your facts for the day. An ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. And here's one. You ever feel frustrated? You now bang your head against the wall. You know, maybe you want to lose a few pounds. Well, it's been shown that banging your head against the wall uses 150 calories an hour. Maybe I get a bit of a headache, so maybe we'll cut that out. All right, here's your thought for the day. I'm thankful for the mess to clean up because it means maybe I had some friends that just came over or we had a fellowship time. All right, that's it for today. Thank you all for coming. God bless. Remember to subscribe and and brighten the corner where you are. Share this with somebody today. Maybe post it on your timeline if you have the thought to do so. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.